Hi everyone. Um, so uh, the video that I'm going to do today uh, regards uh, a report uh, on digital euro, which I'm going to just present it. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to give some opinions of mine and um, a little bit uh, from the forward uh, of this report. Um, and at the end, I will finish with some of the of my opinions regarding uh, this. So um, this report um, is a report on a digital euro. Um, it was uh, about it is about uh, the possibility and implementation of digital euro in uh, the euro system. And um, I'm going to read a little bit uh, from the foreword so that you understand what it's about. So, a key part of the Euro system's mission is to provide citizens with riskless money for their payments. The Euro system has been providing Euro banknotes for nearly two decades. While cash is still the dominant means of payment, new te technologies and the increasing demand uh, for immediacy from consumers are changing the way European citizens pay. This is evident in the expanding role of fast electronic payments. To ensure that consumers continue to have unfettered uh, access to central bank money in a way that meets their needs in the digital age, the uh, ECB's uh, European Central Bank Governing Council decided to advance work on the possible is issuance of a digital euro, an electric, electronic form of central bank money accessible to all citizens and firms. A digital euro would be introduced alongside cash and it would not replace it. Okay, uh, so far uh, what uh, we can understand about this uh, regards that uh, the central bank uh, has seen the changes on consum consumeristic uh, um, options and how uh, cons consumers are using their money and the role of uh, fast electronic payments. Um, second, uh, there is this uh, concern, per se, uh, that um, the, cent the European Central Bank um, regards the necessity to create a central uh, bank money uh, a digital, uh, for the digital age. Um, so the idea is to uh, create this report in first in instance and, um, and try to analyze the viability or not of um, a digital euro uh, and if it should be centralized, uh, a centralized uh, coin currency or if it uh, should be decentralized. So, um, my idea regarding this um, is that um, I do think it should be decentralized. However, um, uh, the, the most important thing for the central bank is that because it's central, the money is centralized so that the bank can still have uh, some power over it, not uh, about the um, the about its creation, but mostly about uh, the possibility to um, access uh, how it's been used and uh, and um, have some kind of protocols that they can somehow um, follow uh, how the money is uh, moving. Uh, in this regard, I prefer it to be decentralized because the idea is uh, so that money is not something uh, to oppress the society, but instead to free it and to give them the to give us the opportunity to choose what, what whatever we want. So for this reason, it doesn't make much sense for us to be choosing something that control us uh, and instead it's preferable to have 
uh, a currency that we can control it instead. So I'm going to continue. A, digit a digital euro would create synergies with private payment solutions and contribute to a more innovative, competitive and resilient European payment system by serving as, uh, as a unifying force in Europe's digital economies. A digital euro would also be an emblem of the ongoing process of European integration. So uh, this is not the first time that uh, uh, Euro, well, uh, a country, let's say that Europe is a country, well, it's not, but just for the sake of it, uh, does something like this. Uh, one example of it is the Im uh, implementation of the digital yuan in China uh, by the uh, Re People's Republic of China uh, government. And... Um, it, it wasn't uh, like this doesn't seem the same, but even though uh, it wasn't a choice of the public um, there, it was in fact the government that decided and in fact implemented it and experimented directly. So it gave a uh, digital UN to uh, some, um, uh, some citizens of China and... Uh, and they used it uh, however they pleased. Despite of being uh, interesting, the, the, proced the procedure, it, it doesn't take into consideration uh, what the people want it to be or how the money should be. And um, in fact, it, it's, uh, it's more uh, like something that was forced upon people. In a way, uh, I don't want to uh, discriminate or uh, extinguish the power of it because I do believe in it, well, what I'm going to talk about, um, which is the euro. But the euro, uh, when was introduced to many countries in uh, the European Union, was in fact forced upon uh, the people. There was not many referendums and in fact um, it was mainly uh, the the the, the central bank and the european union the uh, organization groups groups that decided that it was vi viable and it was something that was um, important to bring um, upon the society i'm i'm saying this because i do think it's a good thing however um, if the society was forced to uh, use it, it means not that uh, the society is ready to use it, well, in a way, but mostly uh, it is about the possibility that, um, that there was a necessity to teach further about these topics instead of just forcing it to the people. So the objective was if we have this thing that can make it easier for everyone, then it should be taught and it should be brought to the people so that people uh, understand it fully and completely and uh, make their decision based on actual facts and for that reason uh, not just disregard it or just say no or in fact just embrace something that can be in fact useful. But uh, that part and the China uh, example also a part, this specific thing, I do think it should be also uh, an experimenting an experimentation on society and with the interest of the society itself instead something that is forced upon us so the idea is something that people work on and be a part of so from bottom to top instead of something that is forced and brought to us as an as uh, a solution or something like that so something from top to down so the best is from bottom to uh, top. So, um, continuing, um, 
It is too early to commit to a specific design of a digital euro, but it is clear that any type of design must fulfill a number of principles and requirements identified in this report, including accessibility, robustness, safety, efficiency, and privacy, while, while complying with uh, relevant legislation. Issuing a digital euro would be relevant for nearly everything the euro system does, and it would have pervasive effects on society as a whole. This report will therefore form the basis for a dialogue with citizens, which is very important, and other external stakeholders. Um, it will serve as a starting point for a public consultation in which we encourage everyone to par participate. And together with the European Parliament and other European institutions and authorities, we will discuss the operational and leg legislative framework that would be necessary to introduce a digital euro. At the same time, experiments on the practical aspects of a digital euro are necessary to examine the strengths and weaknesses of different options. Looking ahead, we need to be ready to introduce a digital euro, shall the need arise. For now, we maintain the options open as the whether and when this should happen. Our role is to secure trust in money. This means making sure the euro is fit for the digital age. And this is signed by Christine Lagarde, uh, the current uh, European um, Central Bank president. Um, regarding these uh, last three paragraphs, um, I do think it's uh, really important to reach out to the people and, in fact, to experiment it uh, in uh, society, uh, in real uh, aspects of society and have, uh, have the inputs come from society and from the citizens and not uh, something that is supposed and just brought and decided from uh, someone. So the objective is, for example, um, in the first and the long term, it is very interesting uh, if uh, the... Um, if uh, we we start to uh, implement it in local level and see how uh, people at the local level um, uh, can uh, use it, uh, being these old or young people, it is important also to uh, make questionnaire questionnaires to uh, citizens about the useful of something like this. And most importantly, I do, I do think that uh, it is very important for them to try to reach people. Um, but I would believe that would be most valuable if it was the other way around, if it was people reaching the central bank with the, the opinions. So uh, for this matter, it is important to educate first and introduce the fundamentals to people to decide for themselves instead of just forcing uh, a new structure for uh, society as it is. So um, just to finish up, um, I do think it's, uh, it's, it's a valuable effort. I do think the report, uh, it's, it's a first very small step uh, to to go forward. Um, however, there is uh, a, I do think it's uh, still very complex for people, and for this reason, it needs to be um, more easily explained and more uh, visually uh, attractive uh, in a way, so that people are uh, willing to go into the report by itself because uh, this is a little bit technical uh, i do think the objective of the report wasn't uh, much the the citizens but more the stakeholders in fact and i do think that is a first warning red warning and for that matter it's important for us to get involved first and and for that reason if we don't it's likely that this will be made from top to bottom and not from bottom to top. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I will try to make it a little bit more interesting about this topic uh, further along the line. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a full, more complex uh, report about uh, the report, but um, if, if something happens, uh, I will try to provide some information, uh, more information along the line. I am not sure if it will be specific about this report. If you are interested, I will probably try to do it. If not, I will try to uh, organize and put the information, whatever it suits, uh, in the next videos. Uh, so if I will talk about uh, digital currencies, I will probably talk a little bit about the digital euro. If I talk a little bit about governance, I will probably talk a little bit about how the central bank uh, decides these kinds of things. But uh, those will be along more along the line. Um, uh, uh, comment and tell me if you are interested about anything uh, such as this and please um, contact me and if you enjoyed it, please, uh, yeah, enjoy it. I hope this was useful. See you later.